I'm Liv, and I'm Eliza. Welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript crew reintroduces The Leftovers, hits the ice with Hamped Up, meets with a certified psychic, and explores Tommy Hart's and AJ Strack's collaboration. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. President Trump spoke at his second State of the Union address Tuesday night. Administrative officials suggested that the president would extend an olive branch to the Democrats in order to bring the two major parties together. That sentiment, however, was cut short when the president laid the groundwork for why he would be forced to declare a state of emergency, given the situation where Congress cannot come to a bipartisan solution. By the time he finished his speech, it was the third longest in modern history. The New England Patriots defeated the Los Angeles Rams by a score of 13-3 last Sunday, securing their sixth Super Bowl victory and tying the Pittsburgh Steelers for most by an NFL franchise. Despite only completing 60% of passes and throwing for zero touchdowns and one interception, Tom Brady now has his sixth ring. However, one question remains. Will he put five on one hand and one on the other? Or maybe a three and three sort of thing? Four, two... Hi, I'm Alexa, and welcome back to The Leftovers. Teachers and staff here at NHS are always deserving of our appreciation for all the hard work that they do. The Leftovers has decided to sit down with a few teachers and staff members here at NHS to discuss more about their background and try and attempt to make some of their favorite foods. Our first guest here at The Leftovers is engineering and woodshop teacher, Mr. Melnick. We're making uh, ve vegan bami mi sandwiches. So a bami mi sandwich is a Vietnamese style sandwich. Um, you can make them out of like pork and chicken and stuff, but we're going to make one out of satia. So it's going to be a vegan. Uh, I'm mostly vegan and vegetarian. My kids guilt me into not killing animals anymore. So the first thing that we got to do is got to get a bunch of dry ingredients together. Um, the most important one is something called uh, the, the vital wheat gluten. And you also add a little bit of chickpea flour and some spices. We got garlic powder, onion powder, something called nutritional yeast. We added all these together. And then we need to add a little bit of uh, vegetable broth. And then you just stir it up. And then when you do, you're going to really notice that it thickens and almost turns into like a, that slime stuff you played with. So you got to do this for three minutes. So we'll probably time warp, right? So now this has sat for 10 minutes. So the texture, the consistency is different. And you want to cut it into small pieces. So this little loaf you can make four out of or so. Okay? You roll them up. And I just happen to have a few that were already cooked. So this is the cooked ones. And I'll admit they're not the most appetizing things out of the package right away. So take these and you can slice them just like they were a piece of meat. So we need to get some flavor on these things. Any good uh, international food store will have a lot of different uh, Asian barbecue sauces. This Korean barbecue sauce by, I think that it's bulgogi marinade. It's really, really good. It's, for, it's perfect for this job. So put that on. Since we don't have to, and we're gonna just cook these in a wok, let's go do that in the other room right now. All right, Alexa, we're Perfect. back. We're back it from cooking it. me that we cooked yes. ourselves. So, now, the fun part. You can finally assemble your sandwich. So, you can just put layer up. You don't need much. A little bit goes a long way. So just one little, a nice little layer of, of the fake meat. We have the quick pickles that we made earlier that are also already done. It's amazing how all this stuff is already done. So take a little of the daikon radish, maybe a cucumber here and there. And again, these things are very flavorful, so a little bit goes a long way on here too. And then the most important ingredient in my mind is cilantro. You gotta put the cilantro on. And then they say mung bean sprouts, but any bean sprout goes well. These are sweet pea um, sprouts. And finally, a little of the vegan mayo. We need to, uh, we, we need something to spread it with. Oh, I guess I can use my jackknife. It's clean, I cleaned it this morning. I believe you. And don't worry, it's not that sharp. So, here we are. 
the vegan bar me made out of homemade seitan. We got some homemade pickled, uh, quick pickled veggies, and a baguette that I bought. But right. Close enough. All right, cheers. Cheers. So, I know that you used to work at a, another school, like the Western Mass area. What made you land and stay here at NHS? Well, um, I like this part of the valley, I like the northern part. I grew up uh, north of here even, um, in Greenfield. But I enjoy this area a little bit more. I, I worked at Minichog, so I wanted to get back up here. And, little known fact, Mr. Lombardi was my vice principal there. So when he moved up to Northampton, I told him immediately, like, listen, when your job comes up, I don't, you know, let me know. I'm not, I'm not maximizing the earning potential of my degree, but, um, I like teaching. I, I couldn't. I couldn't stand the cubicle. The cubicle was the was the hard part. It's just mm -hmm. being in those little four walls. Your life never changed. You just every day, you're pretty much doing the same thing in the same spot. Here, there's a marking of time. I have the fall. New Year starts. You have the summer. You get the summer vacation, and then even the the semester change. It breaks up the year. Thank okay, you. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Bonley, for being my very first guest here. No problem. It was absolutely my pleasure. Make sure to tune in next week with our next guest. This was The Leftovers, and thanks for watching. Hey, let's not forget to mention that we're going to be alternating segments uh, each week this semester. Yeah, I'd say that'd be pretty tight, uh, but would you also want to like do segments together some weeks? Yeah, definitely. Hi, I'm Olivia. And I'm Gabriel. Welcome, Welcome to, to Hamped, Hamped Up. up. Y'all ready for this? You've probably already noticed that there are no hockey teams here at the high school, which opens up the opportunity for girls and boys hockey players to play for either East Hampton or Longmeadow High School. Multiple girls and boys from NHS drive long distances just to practice and play games, not getting the luxury of playing at their own school like other winter athletes. To gain a better perspective of the life of a Longmeadow High School hockey player, I sat down with Bridget Golerslau to learn about her senior season and college recruitment process. Well, I think it's actually pretty nice that we're from different schools because when we get to the rank, it's, nobody goes to the same school, so it's, you don't have to talk about school, you're just focused on hockey, and that's it when you're there. Definitely, you have to learn a lot about the people that you're playing with, and it's a lot of people that I'm meeting for the first time and I haven't played with before, so. I have to learn quickly how other people play and how I can play the best with them. Well, we have four different people from in the leadership roles from four different schools, so I think each of us have a slightly different leadership style and each of us can bring something a little bit different to the table in terms of how we lead the team. So my recruiting process was definitely a little harder coming from a public school because when college coaches are doing their recruiting, a lot of times they only look at private school. And so it was certainly harder for me, and I had to basically go just through my club coach, who actually had some good connections, and was able to connect me with the coach of the Wesleyan team, who then gave me a spot in July, and I committed a few weeks later. As soon as I met the coach, I really loved her. I loved her coaching style. I loved what she had to say about her players and the team atmosphere. Um, and Wesleyan as a school, I think they have a really good opportunities for doing research on campus and some really good STEM programs, which is what I'm interested in. I also sat down with Gabe Broder, the goon of the East Hampton boys ice hockey team, to talk about his goals for his last year playing hockey. As a senior, I gotta make sure that like all the younger kids, like especially the freshmen, are doing what they're supposed to be doing and uh, not misbehaving themselves. And just got to make sure that like, everyone's on the same page and we're all working towards the same thing. I guess maybe we'd all be a little bit closer if uh, we all went to the same school, but we all kind of try to hang out as much as we can outside of school, and there's no like in-school beef going on with everyone on the team, so I guess that might help too. Yeah, well, I was out for a little while for uh, five games, and uh, when I wasn't able to play, I was helping my coach prepare for games, helping my team in the locker room, and uh, telling them what I see, and trying to get them pumped up, and like headbutting everyone, and yelling a lot. But you can't really like drop the gloves, and like, because we're all wearing helmets that have cages, so you'll probably break your hands if you try to fight someone like that. So like really, if we want to do that, we'll probably just take it out in the parking lot after the game, but like on ice, there's still you know, big hits and maybe some punches thrown, but gloves are on and everything. So, you know, everyone's going to be safe while we're on the ice. If I could play with any three hockey players, it would 
probably have to be uh, Patrice Bergeron, Jacob Batchelder, and myself. Probably the most valuable lesson is like, if you play hockey, you're probably going to be pretty sick. The East Hampton boys hockey team next game is Wednesday, February 13th at home against Drury at 7 p.m. And the Long Meadow girls play tonight away against Suffield at 9.20. The boys basketball team is also away tonight at Central at 7 p.m. And boys and girls track has a Western Mass Finals tonight at 6 at Smith College. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. Are you looking for something to do tonight? You can come out and support your friends and your funny bone at the Function Less Show tonight in the Black Box. In other news... Would you believe me if I told you that I know your destiny? Probably not, but you might believe an expert from the other side. Her name is Winifred Tanetta Costello, and she is the founder and owner, owner of Almond Tree Spiritual Shop in East Hampton. In other words, she's a psychic. We wanted to understand what it takes to be a psychic and if Winifred can convince the skeptics of her abilities. So we went down to the Almond Tree and sat with the woman herself. The inspiration for her came for founding Almond Tree, honestly, way back in my 20s. I um, met a mentor. Uh, that owned a similar store to mine. I consider my store sort of like a daughter of her store. And I always tell people I had a sort of this innate sense of something really unique and special I wanted to bring to the world. And to set aside any distracting thoughts, pull a card from anywhere you feel inspired to pull a card. Yeah, let's see what you got. In many ways, you're very present. You are able to be very present in your life and able to really, like, you have a really unique ability to be very grounded, practical, and present here but that you at the same time can also actually reach out your own intuitive abilities is what I'm definitely getting because I'm really focusing on the fact that, so um, I'm gonna put this down so you can see. So like you have, here you have him seated and water is very intuitive and about the emotions. Um, I also think that you probably feel, I think you're very grounded and pragmatic but that you feel in a really big way and that you probably have very, very visionary energies to you because while well, one sense he's holding his cup here and he's very grounded, um, on this part we can see that he's grounded, but the water represents emotion. But then here, the way he's crooked his arm, and I feel like the long-sighted, I feel like you have some pretty big dreams and visions. I think that tarot is a spiritual tool. I think it's an amazing tool for people's personal development, uh, spiritual awakening. Um, you can use it for self-reflection. It ha really can help one ask a lot of questions that help us kind of, um, you know, have a better sense of how to proceed in life. It's very much a tool. I, I often tell people I think of tarot as if you were to combine a GPS and a weather app. So just like we would have the coordinates in a GPS, if we wanted to drive somewhere we had, didn't know the way, and we would also say we were driving somewhere we'd never been before, but we also wanted to check the weather so that we can't kind of arrive hopefully prepared for what we might encounter. I see tarot as an opportunity to kind of check in with our higher self and spirit. I also see it as really helpful for looking at the roots of an issue, like why might something be showing up in your life, or how could you really change something at a very deep, powerful level. Do you guys believe in psychics? Yes. Also, yes. No. Uh, I don't think so. Wouldn't rule it out, but also I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't believe in psychics. No, I think they're just all doing it for the profit. Have you ever had a psychic experience? No. My mom did have an experience where they said she would meet um, the love of her life in October, and that is when she met my mom. But the psychic also said she would have three girls, which didn't happen. My little sister and I have sang like the exact same song at the same time with no cue, so that's a little bit like psychic. <laughs> uh, I have not. My mom got um, psychic, I guess. She talked to a psychic, and the psychic said that some person was going to kill her. So. <laughs> So that's that. Yeah, sometimes my friends and I just think of the same thing at the same time. Thanks for watching. Winifred sure convinced me. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. As many of us are aware, music plays a huge role in our local community, and school is no exception. The instrumental composition and arrangement class alone has sparked massive bouts of creativity. This week, I sat down with juniors Tommy Hart and AJ Strack to learn more about their musical collaboration from last semester. So Paul came to me and he said, it was in music theory, and he said, Tommy, I want you to work on the upcoming projects with AJ. And I knew that he was a really talented musician, 
um, but he doesn't, since he's blind, he doesn't necessarily have like the capability to work with software or work with composition tools. So that's where I came in and he was like, you're gonna do the most, most of the mechanical stuff while AJ, you know, he has perfect pitch. He's maybe the most talented piano player I've ever met in my life. And so he's gonna handle that aspect. And but I thought AJ like handled it really, really well. And I thought he responded really well to when I said, hey, play this again. Hey, maybe try something different there. And I, yeah, he was, he was a really good sport through all of it. And I think we made some pretty, pretty fire music. Well, I was working on a garage band. We have to, um, if we're toy, we have to record some instruments. And uh, we have some piano pipes and bass pipes. And Tommy had to work on some drums yeah. and all that stuff. So, so what we've been doing is, and one of them is, um, we, we went on a story of Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. It was so good. I also sat down with band director Paul Kinsman to learn more about the class that brought together this talented duo. Uh, Tommy and AJ's work is really interesting and it speaks to um, this 21st century of music making that we're going into where most of the music that we're all listening to is made on computers. The music uh, program is beginning to incorporate technology into it. So next year we're going to be offering music technology and sound recording as an option um, to compose music in much the same way that AJ and Tommy did, using computers, inputting musical information directly into the computer, and arranging music that sounds like the music you listen to. So even if you've never played an instrument or even looked at a piece of sheet music, you are always welcome in the music department. Happy Friday! Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for doing that this week. But can I just have your mics back? Uh, no. Wait! We have something to say. Tomorrow, Tomorrow night, night come at, at 7 o'clock in the Black Box Theater. Theater. Come see the improv troupe perform called Function Lust. It's five dollars. <laughs>